welcome to Spoiler Peace Theater, the podcast that doesn't give a shit about spoilers. We just want to talk about the movies. My name is Evan Crean. My pronouns are he, him. I'm co-chair of the Boston Online Film Critics Association and co-author of your 80s movie guide to better living. And my name is Megan Kearns. My pronouns are she, her. I write film reviews for Edge Media Network. I, too, am a member of the Boston Online Film Critics Association, and I'm a member of Gallica, the Society of LGBTQ Entertainment Critics. Yeah, you are. Woo woo. I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Dave couldn't make it this week, so it's the two of us. But we'll we'll basically be hearing a little bit from from Dave in the form of <laughs> <laughs> listicle. Uh, yes. Because that's uh, this episode, we're going to be covering our top 10 films of this year, where if you've tuned in before, you know that we go through our individual uh, ballots for when we voted in BAFCA's uh, annual awards, and we share our top 10s, and we, we talk about them. And so in, in a minute, we'll talk about Dave's top 10. We'll kind of run through his list, see if there's anything we want to add to that. Um, before we jump into our respective top tens. But before we get to that, got a couple things to talk about. First is over on our Patreon this week, we have the winner of our New Year's Eve movie poll, which was When Harry Met Sally. So we are. Huzzah! Yeah. So we're talking about one of our all time favorite movies over on the Patreon this week, and we have a darn good time talking about it. We sure do. So if you're not a patron, definitely consider joining. You can go to patreon.com slash spoiler piece and you can sign up to get exclusive audio each week. We put out bonus episodes for our patrons where we talk about older movies. There's polls. As I mentioned, we did a New Year's Eve movie poll, so you can vote in polls and uh, other good stuff. I feel like we're still trying to figure out, <laughs> <laughs> but we've, we've got the bonus episode thing. I feel like down. Yes. And then the other thing I wanted to say is I wanted to thank we have a new patron. I want to say a huge thank you to Heather Sachs for becoming a patron. So thank you so much, Heather, for joining our, our Patreon. We're excited to have you aboard. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much. Thanks, Heather. Now I feel like we can got the got the announcements out of the way. So let's let's dig into some top ten movies because I'm sure we have a lot to say about them. <laughs> <laughs> we always do. <laughs> yep. So, because Dave couldn't make it, I'm going to share his top 10 first. We'll go down the list. We'll start at his number 10 choice, which is Turning Red. Ooh. Yeah. I really like that he included an animated movie on here. Me in too. His, his top 10. Um, one that I thought was really good, and I really it liked. Is. And I was surprised it didn't show up more in my ballot other than in the animated category mm -hmm. yeah i was gonna say i should we should also mention that well you evan you know everybody's ballots i don't actually i know yours i don't know dave so this is all new information to me hearing so i'm hearing <laughs> it as you hear it listeners <laughs> nice yeah, that's right <laughs> i love it but yeah no turning red that's a, it's a lovely movie it's really sweet it's a really tender coming of age story and mm -hmm. it's just wonderful so i love that he picked that yeah me too i was glad to see that in his 10 spot yes i, I did i did help t tally up the votes so I, I was a little bit spoiled in that i've seen <laughs> people's ballots although when you see almost 40 people's ballots and you're trying to count them you don't <laughs> sure remember blurs. all of which you know all the things that are in their ballots so this is definitely a refresher <laughs> <laughs> all right so coming in at number nine on dave's list is the batman oh nice <laughs> I'm already loving Dave's ballot. <laughs> <laughs> the Batman was so good. I it, it I felt like it's better than it has any right to be, but it yeah. is a legitimately great superhero movie, great noir, great detective story. Yeah. Very rewatchable too. I watched it more than once this year and it was very enjoyable. I think I can't I think that was one that you guys talked about before I had a chance to see it, if I'm remembering. Correctly. I think so too. That sounds right. Yeah. And I remember when I saw it, it was it was a little long for me, but I did <laughs> think it was a good noir detective story. I did enjoy watching Batman kind of unravel things. And I did you know, I don't always love Paul Dana, but I feel like he actually <laughs> was really, really good, as, good as the antagonist in that movie. So I agree. Props to him. Yeah, and I always love Robert Pattinson. I think he is su he has such an interesting career in what he mm -hmm. chooses, and I think he's perfect as Batman. And I think 
he's great with Zoe Kravitz, who is a great Selena Kyle Catwoman, and they have great chemistry. Yeah, I just really like this. And I like seeing something a bit different than what we usually see for Batman. And he Mm -hmm. is a detective in the comics. So I like that it really leans into that. So yeah, I dug this. Yeah, I, I I I did too, and I, I agree with you that Robert Pattinson was an, a a really good choice as Batman and an an interesting spin on Batman character that we mm-hmm. haven't quite seen today. Which is, I mean, what you hope anytime you see a new right. movie featuring Batman, because you're like, how many times can I see, you know, <laughs> poor Bruce Wayne lose his parents? Oh my god! And see another Batman origin story. If I got to see those pearls fall off one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's funny, funny you should mention pearls because Dave's number eight choice is Pearl. <laughs> Are you serious? Whoa. Yeah. I know he really liked it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could comment on it because I still haven't seen it. But, oh, uh, I've seen I, it. I guess he did really <laughs> like it. I was surprised that yeah. it ended up on, on his ballot here in the number eight slot. I'm surprised too. I mean, I saw it. I liked it. Um, I mean, I'm also, I was also the outlier in the X episode where I didn't hate it. Um, <laughs> I wasn't enamored with it the way a lot of people were, but I, I actually think I, I, in some ways I like Pearl better and some ways I like X better. It, I think for me, it depends on what you're looking for. So yeah, but Pearl is stunning to look at like the color palette is really striking it very much is going for a technicolor feel it's very much evoking the golden age of hollywood and movie musicals and very much like embracing wizard of oz like a really kind of demented wizard of oz <laughs> but yeah and mia goth is outstanding in it she's really spectacular in in the role um but yeah it's good i mean i i enjoyed it so and clearly Dave did too. And I love I yeah. love that he liked it this much. That's so exciting. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the next one on his ballot, I know, is one that you also really loved. It's uh, in the number seven slot. He's got Decision to Leave. Yeah. That is a great one, too. It's funny. None of these movies are on my ballot, but they're all really great picks. Yeah. No, Decision to Leave. Ooh, that's a good one. I know you are not as into it because it's so long, but I <laughs> loved it. It was fantastic that ending especially oh boy oh yeah that was a devastating ending that is dark that is intense it is gutting i'm here for it and tay wang is acting her face off oh man so good great film great film and um oh my god um pak chanuk is such a great director and such a great visual storyteller that this film is so striking yeah great choice yeah it was a very striking movie visually too. I'm just thinking mm-hmm. a lot about the cinematography in it. That was it was just gorgeous, so memorable to me. Yeah, as most of I was gonna say, I don't, I haven't seen all of his films, but most of his films are incredibly striking visually. So yeah, definitely keeps that going. But oh man, such a good film. I want to rewatch that. <laughs> <laughs> the next, the next one on Dave's list in the number six. I have not seen this, and I, he, I'm not. Have you seen Living? I have. Dave and I talked about it. We both saw it at Sundance and we talked about it on our Sundance episode early this year, back in January. So, wow, he must have really liked it then because if it stuck with him, I love that. But yeah, Bill Nye is wonderful in it. He's so good. It's such a restrained performance, which feels very different for Bill Nye because he's usually Mm. so ostentatious and kind of over the top and kind of hamming it up like in certain roles. Like I think of like Love Actually and in Underworld and things like that. But this is such a restrained and tender performance from him. And it's a really lovely film. It's really, it, it's wonderful, really is. And I love that he loved it so much to put it on his ballot because it's it's a great film. It really is. It's a lot about, you know, what you do with life when you are, dying and and how do you make a lasting impact and what do you do with your final time and yeah it's just it's great it's a great film i'll have to check it out because i do really like bill nye i think yeah i do. always enjoy him even a movie is even in like ensemble movies where i'm like eh, i don't mm-hmm. know about this movie but i really know that i like him yeah he's spectacular and it really great you need to check this out. 
All right. So clocking in at number five on Dave's list, we have The Wonder. Oh, I love that this is on his list. Another great movie. <laughs> with This had my number two favorite score of the year and cinematography of the year. <laughs> It did have some incredible cinematography, as we talked about uh, yes. in the episode. Just just really an incredible way of um, creating compositions that felt like they were individual paintings and yes. individual impressionist paintings. It was just so, so striking. Yeah, Ari Wegner's cinematography is just jaw-droppingly gorgeous in everything she does. Yeah, and that score is like a horror movie. It's so intense and so unnerving. And Florence Pugh it gave one of my favorite performances of the year. So good. Yeah, she is She is really good in it. All right. So now we are down to number four. This is a movie I wish I had seen because I've heard so many good things about it. Uh, the film After Yang. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is on my ballot. We'll be talking about it. <laughs> Good. And yes, you do need to see it. Yeah, I, I really, I've heard so many good things about this, like both uh, Colin Farrell's performance and then the movie mm -hmm. as a whole, I've just heard is really good. And it was one, I just, I don't think I got a screener of it or or had the opportunity to watch it because otherwise I would have wanted to because I've heard so many great things about it. We did get screeners for it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you know what? Know we I get in and <laughs> we get inundated with them. So there's just so many. But yeah, I will re I will share all of my after Yang thoughts when we're talking about my ballot. But yeah, it's it is it's a wonderful film. I love that nice. it's on his ballot too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So number three slot for Dave was Banshees of Inner Sharon, which we yes! I feel like we just talked about it, even we though did. it was a few weeks ago. <laughs> this is also on my ballot. <laughs> Yeah, I love this. Should we talk about it now? Should we wait? I don't care about like I we could talk about it now. Or we did just talk about it, so I don't know how much we should talk about it. Yeah, we could talk about it a little more. Let's let's get to Dave's two and one choices and then All I right, feel like that'll be a good it. transition to your um to your ballot. Okay. We're already seeing some overlap here. So uh number two on Dave's list was actually my number one, God's Country. Ooh. So <laughs> this I'm is sure on my on list ballot. too. Oh yep. God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Dave's my number one, Dave's number two. It's kind of funny. And my number um, three. <laughs> so we'll talk more about it in a minute. Yes. Um, but I love I, I love that Dave had Cha Cha Real Smooth as his number one choice. Wow. Yeah. yeah I really liked that movie. And it was definitely it circling too. my top ten. Didn't quite make the cut, but I it just I found it to be such a um like an earnest, charming kind of movie about a guy who's like trying to figure his life out and then, you know, <laughs> unintentionally falls in love with the married woman and the complications of that. And mm -hmm. I thought the, the daughter was just fantastic in that. Yeah, she um, was. She was really great. And I thought it was just like a, a really sensitive portrayal of someone who's autistic. And I, mm -hmm. I, heard that it won an award or something a, a representation award uh for its portrayal of autism i just i thought it was a really great movie um like really well done it just didn't it just didn't make my top 10 yeah i liked this a lot um i didn't like this enough to be in my on my ballot in my top 10 because there are just so many great films this year but i did like this i did like this a lot so yeah so i like that i like his ballot his ballot is a good mix it's very interesting yeah, yeah, I like the mix of movies in here. Mm -hmm. So then, Megan, I feel like we've already heard that there's some overlap. So let's start <laughs> running down your list. All right. Oh, and something that we forgot to mention that Dave did share with us. He said oh. that if he had seen women, Sarah Polly's women talking before we voted, he, that would have been on his top ten. I'm curious what would have gotten bumped. Um, maybe turning red maybe something else i don't know but yeah but yeah. he said it would have been on his top 10 which is a nice segue because women talking is my number 10 <laughs> all right well, look at that thank look you for remembering that. that oh you're welcome <laughs> well it was also handy because i'm looking at my list on my phone and it's right there so <laughs> so there's that i'm not going to talk about this too much because we just talked about this last week on our last episode mm -hmm. so you should definitely go check it out if you haven't heard last week's episode but yeah, I loved Women Talking. It it gutted me when I first saw it about a month ago. And then I rewatched it um, just a week ago, 
No, two weeks ago. I don't know. Before we voted, I, I watched it again because mm-hmm. I was one of those that I thought, I don't know if this is still going to stay with me. And it at, like, and it absolutely did. Like watching it again, I was still just gutted. And it's so many powerful performances. It's such a great ensemble. The acting is exceptional. The cinematography, which we didn't really talk about on the episode, is very divisive because a, mm. I heard a lot of people talk about how they thought it was an ugly looking film and they didn't like it. I actually really like the cinematography and I like that it's drained of color because to mm-hmm. me it's very fitting of a commentary on their lives. And yeah. in the production notes, the reason for that too, there's another reason. Sarah Polly was inspired by – it's about – so Women Talking is about a Mennonite community, an isolated Mennonite community and about the women talking about what to do about – um, rapes that occur in their community. And Sarah Polly was inspired by a photographer who took black and white photos of Mennonite communities. But um, she and the cinematographer talked about doing black and white and she didn't want to do black and white. Um, so hence why the drained color. Anyway, I think the cinemato- cinematography is really striking. I love the score. It's one of my favorite scores of the year. Um, it's very raw, very simple. Um, strings. And yeah, I just, I think everything about this is just meticulously done. So I agree with Dave. It's a great film and I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was great too. It definitely got my vote in multiple categories on my ballot from like best director, uh, best screenplay. Yeah. Um, I think it's a very, it's a very impressive film. And you know what? I, I'm on board with the cinematography. I think it's appropriately austere for the, the subject matter. Right. That, you know, that's the thing is that sometimes I feel like, yeah, sometimes something isn't as as aesthetically pleasing, but cinematography is not just about what looks pretty. It's also about, you know, obviously like perspective and the mood and trying to put yourself in the feeling of the characters through visuals. And I think, I think this does that exceptionally well. So Mm -hmm. yay. I'm glad you agree. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm glad you like it too. And I'm glad Dave loved it too. <laughs> so my number nine film is uh, Nikiatu Jusu's Nanny, which I saw back at Sundance in January. And again, this was another film that I loved when I saw it. And I was, and this is a horror film. Um, it's about a Sen- Senegalese uh, woman who immigrates, and it's a kind of a horror fable spirituality like it's incorporating spirituality from West Africa and some folklore and it definitely stuck with me and then I rewatched it and I still found it incredibly moving incredibly striking really stunning and a mm-hmm. really great really great really evocative atmosphere of dread and tension and unease and just a really great depiction of what it's like for a woman who's work, who's an immigrant who has a child. She's a mother and she's separated from her child in order to make money. And I just, it, and it also a lot of commentary on classism and racism and, and how the American dream is a, is a scam and kind of all of, the, all of these intense themes. And I just, I really loved the film. So, and I can't wait to see what else she as a filmmaker does. And the lead performance by Anna Diop is really fantastic too. Yeah, Nanny's one that's been on my list, and I I really need to see it because I've heard so many good things. Oh, you need to see it. <laughs> I'm very intrigued to what you have to say, like when you see it. So we'll have to have to discuss after you. see I it. mean, it sounds like there's a lot of good material to a lot of layers to this one to discuss. There is, yeah, there definitely is. Oh, I loved it. And then my number eight film is Tar, uh, and we talked about this in. One of our episodes, our recent episodes, and we really dug into this. And this was a film, another meticulous film by Todd Field. And Kate Blanchett is just giving a bravura performance. And Nina Haas is exceptional in a supporting role. She's so good. Mm-hmm. What she's doing with her face and her facial expressions is just spectacular. But I really loved this. This was such a thought-provoking film, such a challenging film, such an uncomfortable mm-hmm. film. Yeah. And... I, the way it's telling its story and playing with perception and using its visuals, it's just, it's so well done. It's so complex and layered. And I just, I, I thought this was just an exceptional film. I mean, it's definitely one of the more 
uh, thought provoking movies that I saw this past year. Really, <laughs> there's a lot to look at, and then I feel like even after we recorded our episode on it, I was reading an article from Slate about the film and also mm-hmm. that kind of like cracked my head open and made me think about it in a different way <laughs> and so yeah. i was like wow there was this other stuff going on and like there were elements of it that we discussed but i was like i feel like i was engaging with it in a very specific way and then i'm like oh my god there was this other stuff that was also happening in the movie that i was like it was like in in, in my peripheral vision basically there's i that's a, that's not the best way to describe it it's the best way i can think of <laughs> so mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. so that was happening in my peripheral vision that i was not assimilating into my brain until after i read this thing i was like oh man yeah there was all that other stuff going on there too mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah there was and yeah the slate article that you're talking about is a really great article talking about taking the ending at that how pe- a lot of people are taking at face value and it's really not you know about how a lot of it is possibly in the protagonist's head and yeah which we did talk about which i think is so interesting that like we did kind of like debate it and talked about it a little bit but yeah but that article gets into the very detailed nitty gritty like scene by scene which and shows gifts of it which is really interesting too um, but yeah, there's another really great article. I, I've actually read a lot of great articles about it. Um, there's a really fantastic one at Polygon too that talks about the ending and really digs into the ending and and the meaning of it. And yeah, anyway, so many great articles about it. Such great discussion. Um, and that's what I love about this film is that it is yielding and generating so much analysis and discussion about art and Mm -hmm. about, you know, I hate even saying cancel culture because it's not really a thing, Um, but about the myth of cancel culture and how people don't Mm -hmm. get actually canceled, um, about problematic behavior, about, you know, um, about predatory behavior, about abusive behavior, toxicity, like so many things, like ambition, um, being queer, like just so many things. It's, ah. Yeah, I just I love this. I I I could talk about it all day because there's just so much to unpack. It's so great. Yeah, it's dense in a good way. Yes, <laughs> yes, completely agree with you. My number seven pick. I have a feeling this is going to be on your ballot too, Evan. If I remember correctly, <laughs> <laughs> seven pick is everything, everywhere, all at once. Yes, yes, Yay! this was also on my ballot. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so it so is. good. Um, yeah, Kihi Kwan was my pick for best supporting actor. He's amazing in it. So wonderful. He gives one of the most tender layered performances. I love it. Michelle Yeoh is wonderful. Stephanie Husu is wonderful. She was also one of Mm -hmm. my picks for best supporting actress. And it's just the editing. This was also one of my picks for best editing because the editing is exceptional. The cinematography is great. Yeah. The scene where there's two, where the two of them are rocks talking to each other. And it's like one of the most moving things I've seen all year. And I was crying and it's just yeah. two rocks with googly eyes. Like it's amazing. It such, is. such a great film. I love yeah. it so much. So moving. It was, you know, one of a handful of movies I actually saw in the movie theater this year. Oh, to like a very like, uh like like a theater on the cape during the off seasons there was like barely anybody in there it was like maybe like 10 people total in the entire theater and went to see it and was just so sucked in by it right and uh it's such a moving story of uh mother daughter intergenerational relationship and it's totally bonkers and you know edited and art Mm -hmm. directed to just like incredible levels and i was reading recently that's you know it's not on the short list in some of these technical categories for the oscars which makes me really annoyed because it's so deserving of being in them because it's just i mean if you think about this movie it costs you know a few million dollars to make and it's made like a gajillion dollars oh my god it is like made so much money because so many people saw this and it resonated with them. Yes. Despite being, you know, the Daniels, you know, they made Swiss Army Man, which, you know, <laughs> it was a movie I wouldn't expect to have liked about a farting corpse. But here we are. It's just like, <laughs> I think it was incredible. I think they knocked it out of the park again. And, you know, there's there's so many layers to this movie. Mm-hmm. It's so impressive. Yeah, and to hear you know them being shut out of certain categories already, I'm just really annoyed because this is one of the most you know visually interesting, unique, yes. 
yeah. knock you on your ass kind of movies mm-hmm. that has come out this year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is shocking because I feel like this is a movie that is made for technical awards. I mean, I would argue it's made for a lot of awards, but especially the technical ones because it's done so well. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, you're absolutely right. And I love that you talked about how it's resonated with people because I mean, this is a film that you can access on so many levels. I mean, you know, it's one dealing the fact that it's an Asian American family, you know, talk, you can talk about it on that level. The fact that the daughter is queer and she doesn't feel accepted by her mother. You can talk about it on that mm-hmm. level, you know, feeling despondent and disillusioned with your life, the way Michelle Yeoh's character is, you know, she's, just kind of in the drudgery of the day to day and, and isn't very, it's not what she envisioned for her life. And because you can access it on that level. Like there's just, there's so many ways to access it and mm-hmm. it's doing it. You're right. In such a visually inventive, such an exciting way. It's so new. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's a time when so many audiences talk about how they're so, you know, it's everything's dominated by superhero movies. And mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with that per se because there's so many other films out there, but not everybody has the access to them. Not everybody has the time to watch them or to seek them out. Or, you know, if you live in a small town, maybe your cinema doesn't show, you know, more indie, unusual indie films. And so the fact that this film has been shown for so long, so many places, you know, and it is so different. We should be embracing mm-hmm. that, even if it didn't resonate with you, but it clearly has with so many people and it's so good. Yeah. I just, this, I want more of this. I want more weird. I want more unique. I want m- more moving, all of that. Mm-hmm. And that's what this is doing. And it's, it's such a propulsive and kinetic film and exciting. And I just, I love that. For sure. And also, I feel like I should put more precise figures around a gajillion dollars in the budget for the movie. It was about $25 million and it's made over a hundred million dollars. So that should tell you yeah. that how much it resonated with audiences. It's just, it's an incredible movie. I ended up watching, I like, <laughs> Shauna was watching it with her mom and like, I ended up coming in toward the end of it because I think we were recording that night, but I was still enjoying uh, yet again watching the end of it because it just, it's just comes to such a moving conclusion. <laughs> mm-hmm. It does. It really, really does. It's just, it's a lovely film. And I saw it much later in the year. So I had been here. I didn't know much about it because I'm very good at avoiding uh, <laughs> spoilers when I want to. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I had been hearing just everywhere from critics and audiences that it was just so incredible and such a great film. And then when I finally saw it, I was like, I mean, I love this cast, but I'm like, am I really going to love it as much as everybody else? I don't know because it's been hyped for so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I did. It was wonderful. It was an incredible experience. And I just, I, yeah, I love it. And I can't wait to watch it again. It's so good. It's so different. You know, as critics, I feel like we we also see so many, like you see the same films kind of over and over, just same stories yeah. being retold and repackaged. And so to mm-hmm. see something, you know, different, so different, divergent from everything else is just, it's, yeah, it's great. I love it. And I love that you yeah. love it too. Yay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> ended up in my ballot. <laughs> <laughs> in Yay! my top 10 so Mm-mm-mm. love it love it love it it's so good well my number six film which i'm kind of surprised this didn't end up on dave's ballot actually but i don't know if you ever ended up finished watching it <laughs> <laughs> but i loved it is after sun charlotte wells's directorial debut i loved this film it is it's a film that is very unassuming it's just about a father and daughter on a vacation and it's Basically about the the protagonist, the daughter, is looking back on her time like 20 years earlier on this vacation with her father. And, you know, it's gotten tons of critical acclaim. And when Mm -hmm. I started watching it, um, I'm like, yeah, I I was at a screening and I saw it and I was like, yeah, I I like this. I like this. But I don't I don't I don't I don't get why why people are like kind of falling all over themselves over it. And then I get to the last like half hour, 20 minutes of the film, and I was emotionally destroyed. It's so good. It is so powerful. It is so different in the way it moves and how it shows memory and how memory impacts us and father-daughter relationships and how we never really know our parents and how we know fragments of them, but not 
their entire selves. And there's a lot of things. Here. Paul Mescal is incredible as the father. And there's so much being told here visually without being explicitly told. There's a lot of things that are being alluded to, but that, that are never mm-hmm. actually fully explained or explicitly stated. It's just, it's an incredible film. And this, not only was this in my top 10 ballot, Paul Mescal was also in my top three for best actor. This was also in my top three for best editing. It's just, it's it's a stunning, stunning film. And it's a really confident debut. Like this does not feel like a film from a first time filmmaker. Based on your description, it doesn't sound like it. The way that you're describing how it right? trusts the audience to like plant ideas that it doesn't necessarily fully explain or right. it doesn't, you know, uh, it leaves room for interpretation. Mm-hmm. I think that mm-hmm. is... That's always bold when I see yes. that, and I always appreciate when it, even if it, even you know, we've talked a lot about we love when you know directors swing for the fences, even when it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, and this feels it, it doesn't quite feel like swinging for the fences, but I appreciate kind of. when a director <laughs> trusts the audience, yes, to engage with the material and doesn't feel like they need to beat you over the head with explaining it or with exposition. Mm-hmm. I just I always appreciate that as a viewer. <laughs> I do too. I mean, and to tell you how this film does that, when I exited, there was another critic there who, when I was coming out, the press rep asked me what I thought. And I was like, that was, I was emotionally devastated, destroyed, loved it. Fantastic. And another critic was like, what did we just watch? I didn't get it. (laughs) So (laughs) there you go. You know, like, and that is the thing that you're absolutely right, Evan, that, that she is 100% trusting audiences to interpret this and to follow along. And it's a very unassuming film because at first it just seems like a normal vacation and like it just seems kind of, you know, simple and basic and straightforward and it really starts to shift and get more complex as it goes on. And I just, yeah, it's a stunning film. It's a film that just has stuck with me for quite a while and I need, I feel like I need to watch it again to like pick up on more of the nuances. So yeah, it's even, I feel like even if it's a film that might not fully work for you, it like, I don't mean you specifically, but I just mean the the proverbial you, the general you. (laughs) Yeah. Even if it doesn't work for you, I feel like it should be appreciated for what it's doing and what it's trying to do because it's trying to create a visual language for memory and Mm -hmm. kind of, you know, how ephemeral time is and memory is. Ah, it's so good. Just such a great film. Now, my fifth film, this is a film I'm very excited about and saw it last year and it finally got released this year. Very excited. We're all going to the World's Fair and I love this movie and how weird it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. definitely just saw it show up on a couple of ballots. And yes. I was looking over. Love <laughs> it. For the Bofco Awards. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So this is Jane Schoenbrunn's film and this is such a great film. It's basically just the protagonist and she, Anna Sophia Robb and her in front of a computer screen. And it's so good. It's so creepy. It's so unnerving. It's really exploring in a real like identity in a really fascinating way. And it's also really interesting because Jane Schoenbrunn was going through their transition um, while they were making this film Mm. and that's really interesting because it really it really is such an allegory for gender dysphoria and body dysphoria and it's just it, ugh, i was just blown away by this film when i saw it last year and then i watched it again this year and i was still blown away by it and <laughs> i just i loved it i love how unnerving it is unsettling it is creepy it is it's also incredibly tragic and just like really moving um, and I don't mean tragic in like the normal way of when we're talking about like trans bodies or queer bodies, you know, not in that way, but it's just, but there's like a sadness to it, like of isolation yes. and isolation, loneliness. loneliness. Yeah. 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 I, and, I knew that's what you were getting at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that, but yeah, I just, I love this film. I think it's so great. I just love how weird it is. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's really weird and unsettling. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I loved it as much as you and Dave did, but it definitely, uh, it's definitely unsettling and creepy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it for sure is. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's so good. Um, and then my fourth film is, like Dave, The Banshees of Inna Sharon. Woo, woo. Woo. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Yeah, this. I mean, I've talked about it extensively when we covered it on the show, but I just, I love this. This was my favorite performance of the year from Colin Farrell, who, by the way, made my ballot twice with two performances of this year. But yeah, but Banshees was my favorite from him. And this is just, Same. it's, yay, I love that. It's great. So great. And this is also my top ballot or uh, top screenplay choices. Um, I love it. I love this screenplay. It's funny. It's tragic. It's sad. It's bittersweet. It's so sharp. It's so funny. So well done. I just, and it was a film that start, that I always pick films that really stick with me and that I can't mm-hmm. stop thinking about the characters or what the characters did or what they're going to do. And this was, a, this was a movie that I could not stop thinking about the characters and their choices and what their lives would be like after this movie was over, which I feel like that's really the testament of a great film is when you're still thinking about the characters like they're people even after the film has ended and you're like, well, what would they be doing afterwards? And it's like, well, mm-hmm. the story's over. But in my head, they're still going on. So, yeah, I love this movie so much. It's so great. I love that it's also – so many other people are loving it too. Yeah. I, I agree with you though about movies where – and TV shows, I feel like this happens to me a lot lately. If I'm really into it, I just want to spend more time with the characters. Yes. I just want to hang out in their world and live in their mm-hmm. world, which – a recent example came to mind with the the show Bad Sisters, which I just oh, very much show. enjoyed. <laughs> I very much enjoyed hanging out with the characters to the point where, like, I think we started watching it again because Shauna's mom hadn't seen it. And we were just like, oh, man, this is so fun. I'm enjoying hanging out with these characters again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny because I don't know if I want to live in this world. I mean, Ireland, yes. But I don't know if I want to live in their world because this island has a lot of problems. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, but I kind of want to, like, hang out and ha- like and go to the pub with these characters and kind of like eavesdrop on what their conversations are like and I want to follow them and find out what's happening um mm-hmm. and yeah and I also I think I talked about this when we covered it on the show but the other thing that oh that really stuck with me too and actually was something that stuck that I noticed about so many of the films that I loved this year this is a really interesting portrayal of masculinity and a really interesting and potent commentary on toxic masculinity and Mm -hmm. kind of sensitivity in masculinity and kindness. And that's the thing too, like thinking about it and everything everywhere all at once, the great scene where he talks about we need to be kind and, and the importance of kindness. And that's really hammered home in a really beautiful way in Banshees as well. And I love seeing that, that we're seeing an importance on kindness because the world is very cruel and very unkind and oppressive. And so to see that in a film have a commentary on the importance of kindness as it's kind of anchor is just really lovely. So yeah, I love this movie. Nice. Yeah. And my, so I was like, I want to talk about this a lot, but I also want to save room for you too, because this is your number one film. My number three film, God's Country. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Yeah. So I won't talk about it too much because I want to hear what you have to say since it is your number one. But I do have to say, I'm kind of in some ways surprised this wasn't my number one because this was a movie that I was telling everybody about. This was a movie that I could not stop thinking about. I rewatched this multiple times. I love this movie. It is Dave and I talked about this um, one time off mic. We talked about how we thought that this movie wasn't going to, or well, he thought I didn't think this. He thought it might not hold up on repeat viewings, and he's like, "Nope, Mm. I watched it a second time, and it's just as good." And I'm like, "Yep, it sure is." And (laughs) Tandy Way Newton gives this was my absolute favorite performance of the year, my best actress performance. But actually, this is my favorite performance from any actor, regardless of gender of the year. What she's doing here feels revelatory, not just for her career and what she's done, which this is for me, the absolute best she's ever been. And I think she's an exceptional actress in everything. This I think is just, it's a very unusual character. We don't normally see the way that she's dealing with rage and frustration and just being burdened by her responsibilities and her grief and her microaggressions of racism and sexism. And it's doing it all in a really fantastic way within a a Western and within a thriller. I just, I love this film so much. And this is, this is a film that I know I'll be rewatching for years because it's just so goddamn good. I love it. I love that it not only made all three of our ballots, but we're in our one, two, and three spots. (laughs) I know. I know. I love that too. I love that too. And like I said, I easily could have had this in my one or two slot. Like my, my top three, I kind of, feel equally about all of them. I love them all. 
the same. So, but yeah, no, this is so good. Oh, I can't wait to hear you talk more about it. But I just, I love this movie so much. And I, you know, I think the other reason why I think I talked about it so much to so many people is because it's so underrated. I don't feel like enough people are talking about it. Yes. And they should be because it's Mm -hmm. freaking amazing. It's so good. Ah, so good. The score, the cinematography. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to stop talking about it because I keep saying, I want to hear you talk about it, but I see, I could keep talking about it too because it's so good. It's it's so good. I mean, obviously we all loved it. It's all in our top slots in our ballot. And, um, I mean, you know, we see a lot of movies. We don't agree on all the movies. <laughs> and so it's That's just funny true. to have a movie like that. It's like we're, we're pretty much in agreement. It's one of the like best right? movies of this year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. It's such a good movie. Well, I think that's a t- true, too, is the testament of it. When you're watching a thriller, if you can rewatch it and it's still just as tense, just as impactful and powerful, and this movie is. Okay, but I'm going to I'm gonna move on. Because, <laughs> again, I could keep talking about it like all night. Um, okay, my number two is a love song. Um, and I this is with Dale Dickey and Wes Studi, and I adore adore this film. This film is wonderful. This is another film that I saw early in the year at Sundance. Loved it. Saw it again uh, a few months later. Still loved it. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. Dale Dickey is the consummate character actor. She has been acting for decades. She, you know, if you don't know her name, you know her face. Like she's just, she pops up everywhere on TV shows and movies. And she's always killing it. She's always great. And, but she's always portraying women who are extremely tough, extremely gruff and aggressive. And Mm -hmm. this is the complete opposite of that. She is extremely tender, extremely sensitive, and it is lovely to see. It's so nice to see her portray a different character, like a completely different character. This is her first lead role. This is a romantic role. It's great. And she's, you know, she's a woman who is, I think, 60. And so to see a woman who is 60 being in a romantic role is rare. And so it's great Mm -hmm. to see someone who has the acting caliber of her do that. And Wes Studi, also, he's the romantic co-lead and he's great too. He's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I love seeing him and seeing him in this role, again, is different for what he usually does. But yeah, this is an incredible film. It's about grief. It's about loss, two people coming together to reconnect. And it's extremely sensitive and lovely and tender. And it's about how impactful music is in our lives. And it's a very quiet film. And I just loved, again, I loved being with these characters. I loved sitting with it. And I just, this is just a wonderful film. I adore it so much. I feel like I need to see it. I like both of them a lot when they show up and things. And mm-hmm. I, I feel like it would be refreshing to see them taking the lead for a change. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it is a slow film. So I don't, I know, I know you're not always yeah. into slow films, but yeah, it's, but it's, true. A, but it's a short run time. So there's that too. But yeah, but it is, it's, it's amazing to see two masterful actors in such different roles. Be, and, and so much of what they do is wordless which is great. They're, they're really conveying so much depth and so many emotions through their faces and their body language. And even the way they're, they both play are playing guitar in this film and and the way they're doing it conveys a lot. Like it's just, it's a, it's a great film. It's really great. You should see it. (laughs) But yeah. And my number one film is after Yang. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. So you definitely should see it. Yeah. So Colin Farrell, like I said, he made my list twice. One, my top ballot, uh, top pick for best actor was for Banshee's Vina Sharon. And my number two pick was Colin Farrell for after Yang. And I love Koganada as a filmmaker. This is his second film. His first film was Columbus, which is a beautiful, beautiful film absolutely stunning and so I was super excited to see this and saw this twice and I'm watching it a second time and I'm like you know I like this I like this but I don't know I don't know if it's still gonna have the same impact as when it did when I saw it like almost a year ago and 
about 20 minutes later, I'm like a sobbing mess until the rest of the film. And the rest of the film, I was crying and I also had a lump in my throat, which is like, I was talking about this recently with another critic about like how sometimes having a lump in your throat feels worse than when you're just sobbing uncontrollably through a movie. Mm -hmm. But I had both with this. And this is such a beautiful film about memory. And it's a sci-fi film, but it's a very quiet sci-fi film. I saw uh, David Ehrlich at IndieWire call this a cozy sci-fi film. <laughs> and when I was describing that to my roommate, my roommate it's like, oh well, yeah, that kind of makes sense because he hasn't seen it. He didn't see After Yang, but he's kind of like, yeah, that kind of makes sense because it's kind of like, you know, contrasting to like cyberpunk. And I'm like, oh, like Blade Runner or Dune or something. Mm -hmm. um, not that Dune is cyberpunk, but <laughs> like kind of like, you know, the more intense, bombastic or hard edged sci-fi. And this is, yeah. this is more about, you know, just a family and it, um, Colin Farrell is he is watching the memories of um, Yang who is um, he is an android and he's like the surrogate brother to their adopted daughter who's Chinese and so um, you in this in this future world you can buy AI to be like a surrogate uh, sibling to your adopted child and to kind of like teach them about their culture and things like that and and it's just, it's a really beautiful, beautiful story about what are the memories we hold on to, what is impactful to us, the connections we make, what our lives consist of. And I think it's funny looking at my list, seeing certain commonalities about like sensitive masculinity, memory, mm -hmm. like and the importance yeah. of memory and connections and what we hold on to and and I think those are, it's interesting that those are the very common themes throughout many of my films on my top 10 ballot. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I love this film and I cannot recommend this film enough. Um, this is also, I feel like as, as much as it's gotten great reviews and good buzz, I feel like it's also a very underseen film. Um, mm -hmm. And it's very beautiful, like beautifully, like Koganata is very... I feel like his both his two films are very beautiful to look at. They're very intentional. There's an intentionality to the physical space of them. This is a very delicate film, and it's just it uh, it just moved me so much. I love this film. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's I really some, need to see it. You do, <laughs> you do, and in some ways, it kind of feels like montages, like when we're watching the memories. But it's not quite like there are montages, but like. I don't know. There's just, there's a fluidity to it. And oh, I just, I love this so much. It's wonderful. I love it. So you should see it. <laughs> All right. So I guess that brings us to my top 10. Yes, it does. All right. So starting at the number 10 slot, I, I try to carry on a tradition that we used to talk about when uh, Chris Jensen was co-host on Spoiler Piece. He had the kind of mantra every year for this ballot to like put something in your 10 slot that was like a little bit more outside the box of like some of your other choices mm -hmm. and like maybe something that you feel like was a movie you really really dug but like other people didn't see or talk about or you know if you definitely use that for more kind of outlandish choices <laughs> in this mm -hmm. year i my number 10 choice was the princess whoa yeah <laughs> <laughs> which was a very fun action movie that was on Hulu that I really enjoyed. It came out right around my birthday. It was a fun oh, yeah, it did. <laughs> birthday movie of like action packed Joey King as a princess who basically has to <laughs> fight her way down a tower to take out this guy who's taken the the royal family hostage. And I just had an absolute <laughs> blast with it. <laughs> Like, just really fun fight choreography and action. And just, mm -hmm. like, one of those movies you don't have to think too hard about. It just it was, like, the right time, right kind of movie <laughs> for me. <laughs> so my number nine choice was uh, Emergency, which was... Oh, yes. Yeah, it was definitely one of the movies. I, it, I feel like my list is, like, a mix of, like, fun actiony kind of stuff but then also <laughs> like things that are like really uh layered social commentary th things that had me thinking a lot like so emergency if you recall what's about this um these college students they're students of color and they come home in their house and there's a white girl passed out on their floor and they have to figure out what to do like trying to take her to the emergency room but they don't want people to think that you know they 
drugged her and so it's just one of those like wild crazy night movies that also has this like really serious bent to it and like really serious stakes and consequences and so that really stuck with me over the course of the year it was one i kept thinking about like man that really is like a t- it, it's funny like it's a dark comedy mm-hmm. but also like has these like very serious stakes oh, and yeah. like it just has a real like devastating climax when the police catch up to them and have them on the ground and they're pointing their guns in their faces it's it's uh woof and the ending too i feel like the ending really knocked me on my ass too when mm-hmm. the the main character is kind of like you just see so much is going on that he's not saying like so much trauma that he's endured from this and uh so yeah it's just it really stuck with me this one that's always i feel like the mark of a good movie for you know a person is like if you can't stop thinking about it yeah so i love that it's just just an impossible dilemma (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it's like they make some silly choices that maybe you're like okay that was a dumb choice but you're like what would you do in that situation it's so difficult to say um the next movie my number eight i feel like it kind of bleeds in nicely uh the forgiven which is about oh yes yeah which is a movie about people who are extremely privileged yeah <laughs> who end up in a very bad awkward i don't know what to do situation um yeah it's so ray fines and jessica chastain are going to this like party in, in morocco and they hit a kill a guy and then they're like initially they're like oh we'll just cover it up and then his family comes and oh my god <laughs> like basically from there like all the time that that ray fines goes off with the guy's family to basically like atone for what he's done oh is just god. so intense and ray fines gives an incredible performance i think in this and also in another movie that i'll talk about on my ballot oh i feel like i was yep. really feeling ray <laughs> fines performances this year like damn this, like morally <laughs> complex like <laughs> guys and in this case he's like such a shithead and such an awful person but <laughs> yeah, you're just really like is. you see him like really eat some pretty large pieces of humble pie and so (laughs) that's the kind of stuff that really like resonated for me with this movie of like you had the like opulence of these people who have this like crazy party house in the middle of the desert and these people who are used to just doing whatever the fuck they want and getting away with it and then having to face like real fucking (laughs) real life consequences Mm -hmm. real life Mm -hmm. scary fucking consequences for their actions So I feel like I'm forgiven an emergency kind of like made sense to me in terms of like the transition. <laughs> like a good double feature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, but the next movie on my list, my number seven choice is Chloe, Chloe Akuno's Watcher, which was nice. a movie that I very much enjoyed. That's a great and, movie. Uh, I saw it so early in the year and I was like, it was so, it just so like uh, stuck with me. It mm-hmm. was just like a really fucking uh, tight creepy thriller with like a really great lead performance from Micah Monroe mm-hmm. and a fucking scary as hell performance from Bert Gorman and uh, yeah that was <laughs> it's uh... just such a creepy fucking movie and so smart and so sharp in its commentary on mm-hmm. sexism and misogyny and stalking stalking it's just ooh. yeah no it's a great film I love that it's on your list. It's because it, it's a good one. Yeah, and it's <laughs> it's funny because I feel like the next choice on my ballot also feels in a weirdly similar vein. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's like it's almost like there's weird unintentional themes between right? some of these choices. That's what happened on uh, mine. I love that that's happening for you too. <laughs> yeah, it's stuff I wasn't necessarily thinking about at the time, but I'm like, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> it was like there was a period I feel like at the beginning of the year where I was watching these like kind of taut thrillers that I was like, oh man, this is <laughs> this is awesome. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> my number six choice is Kimmy, which I feel Ooh, like is also movie. a kind of like movie about somebody on the run. Although yep. in this case, she's on the run from you know big tech who's trying to take her down. 
but she's similarly being stalked throughout the city and uh uh, my god that attempted kidnapping scene <gasps> in the movie it's was horrifying. just horrifying and traumatizing and that's one of the scenes from this year that i just like could not let go because it was just so fucking scary and well done in how scary it was <laughs> yeah i really want to see steven soderbergh do a horror movie like just a straight horror movie because that scene whew, was brutal yeah I mean, and then the whole confrontation in her apartment later in the movie when she comes back and the guys are waiting for her. Mm -hmm. But yes, this movie it also stuck with me throughout the year because it was just such a like tight thriller and just very well done. I mean, Steven mm -hmm. Soderbergh, he is a great director, editor, oh, yeah. writer. He's a guy who wears a lot of hats and yes. he does them all <laughs> very well. Yep. <laughs> totally agree. Yeah. So very, imp very impressive. And then my number five choice was Everything Everywhere All at Once, Yay! which we've definitely talked a fair <laughs> bit about. Um, the one thing I didn't say earlier that I wanted to mention oh, is yes. that I love the moment you were talking about Kei Kwan when he's talking about how you need to like meet people with love. Yes. And I love that moment in the film when Michelle Yeoh has been fighting this entire time, like armies of people she's mm -hmm. fighting. And she's fighting her way up that staircase to get to her daughter and to the uh, everything bagel that's sucking everything <laughs> in its orbit. And she realizes that instead of fighting people, she needs to meet people with love. And it's right. just so – there's something so beautiful about seeing that play out when she just starts mm – -hmm. she's instead of hitting the people on the stairs, she just starts touching them and giving them things that they want. And yes. then you see them like have that moment of like elation – and I just thought that that was such a fun, clever, uh, moving choice in that mm -hmm. scene. And to see that all played out, that, that's one of my favorite moments in the movie. <laughs> that's a great moment. And I'm so glad that you talked about it because it's so good. Also, I just have to say, because I just did a Star Wars marathon, uh, it just reminded me of when Rose in The Last Jedi uh, says, that's how we win, but not fighting the things we hate by saving the things we love. And it, mm. I feel like that's like a great, yeah. you know, like tie in. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly right. I love that. Yeah. I also love the scene where he's like, I would have just, I would have loved living in a world where we just did laundry and taxes together. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's just so sweet. Ah, oh, it's such a good movie. Yeah, it is. It's a great, supporting performance he, he had so my uh, best supporting actor on my bofka ballot michelle Yeoh was on my best actress she was one of my choices for best actress best um, actress was out of control this year as it often is for me like i could have mm -hmm. easily had 10 best actresses and she was definitely on my list for one of the best performances because she's so good so i love yeah. that she's on yours yeah, this this uh, this was in best number two choice for best ensemble for me nice. number two choice for best editing um yep. it's just there's a lot here to really enjoy uh number two for best director Ooh. i really i thought that daniels did great with this mm -hmm. i agree with that really good oh i love it i love that we both love it yay yeah so and so my number four choice was glass onion a knives Ooh. out mystery <laughs> nice because I feel like I, after I watched it, I realized how much I enjoyed it. And then realizing now that I've seen it multiple more times, <laughs> seen it like one and a half more times, I'll say one and a half more times because it's just such a fun. I mean, I've always been a big fan of Ryan Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've seen almost all of his movies and really enjoyed all of them. Um, I love his episodes of Breaking Bad that oh he directed. My God. They're so good. They're, they're incredible. So I think he's a very talented director and I really enjoy his movies. And this, I feel like is no different. It's a very fun murder mystery, but also a very fun ensemble with some really great performances some really mm -hmm. interesting cinematography. Um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. I agree with you. And Daniel Craig is having the time of his life. For sure. And as we <laughs> said on the show, when we talked about it, like, let's make more of these. Like, I, if this oh is. Oh my God, I, yes. <laughs> Just crank I them will, out every year. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'll take more of these cozy, fun mysteries right? with really fun casts. Like, <laughs> Just give it to me. Give it to me. Give it all yep. to me. <laughs> give me more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, 
I love it. I love that it brings you so much joy too, because it is it is a really fun film. Yeah, I feel like I need to go back and rewatch the first one though, because it's been a little while since I've yeah. seen it. I want to see if I like how I engage with it versus this one now that I've seen it. I know, <laughs> like, right? Multiple times <laughs> in such a short <laughs> clip. Let's see. So that brings us into my number three choice, which was the menu. Ooh. Yeah. That's a great film. It is. It, I really dug it. Um, and I really enjoyed talking about it with both of you. It was just the oh, kind of movie I where that. I was like, oh, this is going to be like, uh, this is going to be so much fun to talk about on the show right? because it was so much we fun. Can, yeah. We can like just dig into all the angles of it. And I just, it, it's an, it was an interesting contrast for me because I also watched Triangle of Sadness, which people had kind of described to me as like, kind of sharing some similar themes to the menu mm -hmm. and i feel like i watched the menu uh, i watched triangle sadness i watched the menu i'm like i feel like the menu does it way better that's my <laughs> opinion it's just it's just such a great uh eat the rich <laughs> social commentary kind of movie that's also like super creepy and unsettling oh, and yeah. like we talked about but still restrained in a way that's mm -hmm. also makes it just that much more unsettling with a really great you know back and forth between Ray Fiennes and Anya Taylor-Joy and so it's just one of those movies that I just was like oh this is so good it like <laughs> sets out to accomplish something it does it so well in a way that just totally worked for me <laughs> yeah no I it's a great film I I feel like I wasn't I was excited to see it but I wasn't expecting it maybe to be quite as good as it was no it's really good so I think yeah. I think it definitely caught me by surprise too yeah I was like I'd heard a little bit about it. I knew what the general plot was. I think we even joked on the show, like Dave and I thought this was like maybe about cannibalism or something. And then we <laughs> Dave saw definitely it. thought it was about yeah. cannibalism. Yeah, I think I thought it was about cannibalism too. I think I, I thought like, it was going to be too. <laughs> that's the hot topic this year. Right? But then I was sure like, is. presently surprised it wasn't about cannibalism. But also, just like, <laughs> is it weird that I'm disappointed it wasn't about cannibalism? <laughs> Probably. What does that say about me? <laughs> well, I mean, there's a time and a place for cannibalism, sure. right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, but it, this is, a, it, I think what also surprised me is kind of how meticulous this film is. Like, and again, mm -hmm. like it, everything just has a real intentionality and it, it, it is very restrained. And I, I think that's what I really liked about it too, is that it's so restrained. Yeah. And one, as we talked about on the show, one of the most haunting final scenes of the movies that i've seen this year like that also this is like yeah. seared into my brain Ex excuse the pun it is <laughs> seared into my brain uh, that's one of the <laughs> scenes final scenes this year that was extremely unsettling yeah yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah Ooh, yeah it's it's a it's a doozy it's a doozy it is <laughs> yep very disturbing. <laughs> yep. Weirdly, I don't feel like there's a good transition between my number three and my number two. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint, but I was just, I also, my number two choice was Prey, which was a oh. movie that I also really freaking enjoyed. And I feel Love like it. it was so effective at what it set out to do. It's like, okay, we're making a movie in the Predator franchise, but we're not going to be like really annoying and just like rehash the same crap you've seen right. with this. We're going to tell this like really interesting story that's, uh, you know, takes place in the past and, but still, it is really compelling. It's got a great protagonist. It's got, you know, really good supporting performances. Like I, voted for them both in acting categories on my ballot amber mid thunder and dakota beavers uh i had him in at best supporting as one of my choices and it's just just a fun fucking action movie but also just like really intriguing uh re you know representation indigenous representation mm -hmm. in things that we don't get a chance to see very often and so i was just like hell yeah right <laughs> oh my god yeah this was one of the ones i know we talked about maybe talking about our shout like our um 
our honorable mentions. And this was one I was so sad didn't go in my top 10 because this was in my top 10 for most of the year because I love this movie. And Amber Midthunder is a star. Like I cannot wait to see what else she does because she's amazing Mm -hmm. because anybody who could be in The Marksman and The Ice Road, those two terrible Liam Neeson movies, and she's acting her ass off in both of those (laughs) and like stood out to me. I was like, who is this person? And she's great. And then finally she, you know, is in prey. Yeah, no. And you're right. We don't see it, it, like not only a woman as the lead in one of this, but an indigenous woman. Like that's amazing. And yeah, these are great. These are great. This is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this all film is prey. great. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I need to rewatch it again at some point. Me too. Because it was just so much fun. To yeah. Watch. Yeah. It's tense. It's fun. It's exhilarating. Yeah. No, it's great really really well done i feel like this is a film yeah that i'm just gonna enjoy more on rewatch yeah i mean also just like badass ending too (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah no her resiliency and and determination are great to watch yeah love it oh i love that it's your number two yeah i was like this has got to end up in my top 10 and the more i thought about it i was like oh i really freaking enjoy the shit this This is gonna end up high on the ballot nice nice well, as we as we discussed, my number uh, my number one choice was uh, was God's Country. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Which, yeah, it also really stuck with me as a very you know layered drama on multiple levels. Uh, I voted Julian Higgins as best director on my ballot. Nice. Candy Way Newton was my number two choice for best actress because I think she's incredible in this. Ah, oh, so good. Uh, I had this for best screenplay. I think best cinematography. I had it. So I this movie like really knocked me on my ass. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. Just I think another movie where I was had maybe different expectations going in, and it delighted me by subverting those expectations because I knew this was like this was described as like a thriller, like a cat and mouse thriller of like this professor, you know, in the, in the like rural wilderness and some mm-hmm. dudes are on her property. And then she gets into this like war with them. And I thought I was expecting a very action driven movie. And that is not this, no. but I'm very happy that it's not right? despite being a huge action fan, because this is, there's so much going on here. There's so much complexity in these characters and the relationships. And I think of that scene where she goes to the church where one of the guy's oh. moms is the organist yeah, and they're sitting there having this like incredible conversation that is such a, it's a very tense moment, but also, uh, you know, they're talking to each other on such a human level. And I was right. just not expecting a movie to go places like that. <laughs> Right? Well, a lesser movie wouldn't go those places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're totally right. The fact that it humanizes who's her, like her adversary in this way. Yeah. And they have so weirdly so much in common about, you know, their mothers and religion and expectations put on them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also think of the the Christmas tree scene at the Christmas tree farm where thing, the standoff. Oh, oh my yeah. God. It's so tense. You just reminded me of how tense that scene was. It Ooh. is deeply unsettling. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, I feel like it really speaks to the idea that y- y- there are some places that are so remote. You're like, you could die and no one would know. Like right. you could be murdered and no one would know. And that is one of those scenes where you're like, they could have just murdered these people and no one, everyone would just keep going about their business. It's so scary. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But this film is so, I think, you know, you talking about how like you had these expectations of it being like a really like intense, heavy action film and it's not that. The film is so restrained like and I love that. I love how restrained Mm -hmm. it is and it just takes its time and it just that restraint, it just it builds so much unease and tension and just you as an audience feel the weight of what Tandy Way Newton's character feels like you just are like by the end of the film, she's like, fuck it. I've lost everything. I'm done. And like, you feel that weight from all of the, like being taught and the tension throughout the entire film. And oh, it's just, and that ending, that climax is just so good. It's so yeah. good. Uh, also haunting. 
uh, yes. scene. Yes. <laughs> I had long been thinking about it. Yeah. Oh, man. And I, and I, I respect that the movie, too, doesn't just zone in on their relationship the, the, between her and her adversaries. Like, it's mm-hmm. also about bigger picture stuff. Like, she's a professor and her colleagues are terrible and racist and oh, like they're the worst you know and, and but and then like broadly in the community you know people don't respect her the cop doesn't respect mm-hmm. her he's an asshole and treats her as an outsider instead of a person who fucking lives there which she does you know it's like yep. it's her property she has just as much right to be there as anyone else and she should be mm-hmm. able to vigorously defend her property and people should be sticking up to defend her as well Totally. Something interesting that I don't know if we talked about when we talked about the movie before is that the short story this is based on is features an older white man. And Julian Higgins did a short film that was an adaptation of the novel with an older white man. And I think it's so fascinating by changing it to Tandy Way Newton, a black woman, like even if you didn't include all of the elements about the the racism she endures from her Mm -hmm. adversaries and from her colleagues at college, uh, the college that she teaches at, you still would, there would still be that layer to it. And it just, it adds so much, but the film does go there and it's just so good. I love this film so much. Now I'm kind of mad. It's not my number one (laughs) (laughs) because I love it so much. It's so good. It is. So good. I mean, and we talked about this before we got on the mic, and I'm sure we've said this on the show before, that, you know, this ballot represents generally a snapshot of when we voted. You know, there's, you know, like Dave said, if women, he had seen women talking, it would have made his ballot. But also, like, you just got to make decisions sometimes. And, like, if you vote on a different day, these things might be in a different order, or there might be different movies on here. Very Um, true. So... (laughs) Speaking That's of that, part of what adds to the fun <laughs> and the tension. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My anxiety levels. Uh, actually, I have anxiety levels, but other things. Uh, TMI. Uh, are, are there any movies you would have put on, like as an as a runner up or an honorable mention that maybe on another day would go on here? Oh, that is that is. That was difficult. There were so <laughs> many movies that were circling my top ten, and some stuff that I saw that I was like. I don't know. I I really I I enjoyed Emily the Criminal, um, which I saw. I enjoyed Smile, which really was. You want to talk about unsettling final scenes? That oh, I haven't seen it yet. I'm excited. Um, <laughs> I t- I mentioned recently. I tweeted that I enjoyed Violent Night. There's there's a few movies I've seen that I'm like I really liked it, and it just was like circling my top ten. <laughs> mm-hmm. What about you? Yeah. So Prey was probably the biggest one for me, um, but mm-hmm. also Nope. Um, because I really, really like Nope. And Nope was actually in my top 10 for a very, very long time for mm. most of the year because it was a film I really liked when I saw it. And it, but it was, I liked it more the more I thought about it, like what it's saying about spectacle and what it's saying about film and what we sacrifice for art and for film. And, you know, just, and it's, I had it for my best cinematography because, oh my God, that is. There's a scene that is one of the most haunting and unnerving scenes I saw this year. And it, I just think the film is very striking and gorgeous. Um, it is. Yeah. But like, I, I think it's a very contemplative film and just has so much to say. So I loved that. Um, and then my, another one I loved was Bones and All. Speaking of cannibalism, <laughs> the cannibal road trip love story <laughs> horror film. Mm-hmm. Uh, by Luca Guadagnino. I thought it was fantastic. I loved it. It's so good. And it's a film that, again, loved it when I saw it. But the more time that has gone by, I keep thinking about it and pondering the film. And it's just, it's a really interesting coming of age story. So I love that too. And also, yeah. this is a film that I don't know if, if it ever would have made my ballot, but it's a film I keep thinking about. Is So maybe, who knows? Um, Causeway uh, with Jennifer Lawrence and Brian Tyree Henry was a really, really great film too. Oh yeah, that's another one I've been I've been wanting to see but haven't had a chance to, but I've heard very good things. Yeah, it was really great to see Jennifer Lawrence go back to indie films um cuz mm-hmm. she's such a great actor and yet she gives an incredible performance and Brian Tyree Henry was on my best supporting actor ballot cuz he's really exceptional too and it's just it's a very again, restrained film, very quiet film dealing with some really intense issues um and dealing uh with a veteran who's dealing with PTSD, but yeah, but it was great. 
So yeah. So sometimes I wish we could have a top fifteen, but you know, you yeah, <laughs> or a top thirty because there's there, oh I'm my god, at yes, movies that I've logged this year on Letterbox, and a lot of them are horror movies, and I'm like, we're so, like Master. I thought was a really well done movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, that could have possibly made my ballot in a different day, or if I <laughs> maybe had seen it more recently, it was fresher in my mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, she will. I really enjoyed uh, smile. I was <laughs> deeply disturbing. <laughs> um, you know, there's just I'm lo- I'm looking here and I'm like, yeah, maybe on a different day, some of these things right? might have. I mean, I even really enjoyed the hell out of Orphan First Kill. That was a, that was that's a fun movie up around my top ten for my ten spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and we haven't even like for I don't know about for you, but for me, like there's there are animated films like I love that Dave had Turning Red like. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't have any animated films in my top 10. I didn't have documentaries. And this is, again, a year where I could have done easily a top 10 for or more for documentaries because there's so many great ones. So, yeah. This was a great year for film. And I think it's interesting because I've seen a lot of people be like, it's not a great year for film. But I, I always say this every year. I'm like, if you think it's not a great year for film, you're not watching the right films. Or you're not finding the right films because they're out there. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're harder to find. But... I agree with you. I, it frustrates me. Anytime I see people say it's been a bad year for movies, I'm like, you should watch more movies because <laughs> exactly. I think in any given year, there's plenty of great films. And we, were, as we just said, it would be great if we could do a top 15, top 20, top 30. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's not a bad year in movies. Like, yeah, no. you see a lot more that are bad than are good. Like, yeah, okay, I've seen hundred something movies and 30 of them are good okay that means i saw a lot of bad movies but still <laughs> there were good movies <laughs> yeah a lot of them yeah i just yeah sometimes they're just not the films that always make it to the multiplexes or yeah you know mm-hmm. and yeah so sometimes you might have to watch things on streaming but then that too a lot of times streaming services bury their movies unfortunately but anyway you know there's a lot of options it's hard people i get it people have you know finite Amounts of time, of course, you know, they only have so much time to allocate. You don't know. But yeah, but there's mm-hmm. a lot of great film out there. Again, there's so much. Yeah. We just talked about a bunch. <laughs> we did. Yep. It was uh, it was a really fun discussion. It was a bummer that Dave couldn't join us I to know. talk about his top 10. We miss you, Dave. Um, we miss you, Dave. And uh, yeah, but this has been a really fun episode. I, I do look forward to to digging into our movies even though we've talked about a lot of them on the show before it's fun to kind of like reminisce and maybe think about some things that we didn't get a chance to mention on the show totally. for whatever reason and so yeah i was like because we're chatterboxes and we run out of time yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah thank, thank you as always for tuning in listeners and uh you know we really appreciate it. It's we have a lot of fun doing this show, so we appreciate everybody who tunes in week after week. Um, sorry, just take a minute to pull my uh, oh no worries outro. So we want to wrap up by saying a huge thank you to our editor Auto Clamor. Auto, thank you so much for making us sound great week after week. We love you, Auto. Thank you. You can find the show anywhere you get podcasts. You can also find us at our website, which is spoilerpiece.com. And uh, you can find us on social media. We're Spoiler Piece Theater on Facebook. We're at Spoiler Piece on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, all that good stuff. And uh, if you want to get in touch with us, you want to argue with us about our top tens or <laughs> maybe share your top tens, Ooh, uh, yes. we'd love to hear it. You can uh, send us an email or spoilerpiece at gmail.com or you can give us a call at 862-21-PEACE. Leave us a message, send us a text message, say hi, argue with us about a movie, talk about (laughs) maybe some movie that we didn't talk about that made your top 10. Any and all that stuff is good. We love hearing from listeners. And uh, so if you like the show, please rate and review us. You can go to ratethispodcast.com slash spoilerpiece. That'll take you to your platform of choice. And uh, we appreciate all those ratings and reviews. They help, you know, give us some cred in the podcast world and uh, help more people track down the show. And uh, if you really, really like the show, please consider joining our Patreon. As I mentioned at the top of the show in this week's exclusive audio, we talk about the winner of our New Year's Eve poll, which is when Harry met Sally. And so we had a lot of fun talking about that film. And uh, yeah, so it was a a good conversation and we had a lot of fun and so definitely consider signing up for that at patreon.com slash 
spoiler piece and you can get exclusive audio each week and other fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So all that said, my name is Evan Crean. I am co-chair of the Boston Online Film Critics Association and co-author of your 80s movie guide to better living. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd as Real Recon, and that's real as in film reel. And my name is Megan Kearns. I write film reviews for Edge Media Network. I, too, am a member of the Boston Online Film Critics Association, and I'm a member of Gallica. You can follow me on Twitter at Opinioness World or on Instagram and Letterboxd at The Opinioness. And we'll see you in the new year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.